Good morning, Heidi. Thank you so much for coming in today. I'm Juan L. Gerritsen, as you know, with SelinaHomes.com. And in 2023, I have chosen to give a portion of my sales each month to a different local non-for-profit charity. And from the month of December, I have cho chosen one of my very favorite charities, the Love Koi Foundation. So I would love for you to share um, how that got started and um, different ways that we can contribute to that. Thank you for having me, and I appreciate the support, and it's always nice when people in the community um, give back to the mm -hmm. local charities. Um, so I started the Love Chloe Foundation in 2008, and the reason I did that is my daughter Chloe was diagnosed with DIPG, which is diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, which is really a mouthful, mm -hmm. but essentially she had cancer in her brainstem, and mm -hmm. that is definitely a place that you don't want to have cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so DIPG um, impacts children, mainly children. There are adult cases, um, but interestingly, when an adult is diagnosed with DIPG, they're still treated at a children's hospital because it is a pediatric cancer. So you, mm. you might see a 40-year-old um, receiving oh. treatment at a children's hospital just because it is so specific. There's about two to 300 kids di um, diagnosed with DIPG in the U.S. each year, so it's extremely rare. Um, and it's just not, they haven't figured out how to treat it. So the treatment and prognosis isn't much better than it was when Chloe was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And so she was diagnosed in November of 2006, and mm -hmm. she was just six years old when mm -hmm. she was diagnosed. Um, and her battle was about 11 months long, and mm -hmm. she did pass away in October of 2007. Um, and this was very typical. Um, most kids are diagnosed between five and seven years old, and most kids live between 10 and 12 months. So she really kind of mm -hmm. fell right into those mm -hmm. um, stereotypes types of this particular diagnosis. Now with research and, and some of that happening, um, we are seeing some kids live past that, um, but still it's about, it's about 18 months is, is how long kids survive once they're diagnosed. So it's still something that we feel very passionate about finding a cure to help these other kids. And that was one of the driving factors behind me starting an organization um, when she was first diagnosed my my sole purpose was to take care of her and find her the best treatment um, but then after we lost Chloe my sole purpose was to help others right so um, I had the honor and the opportunity to actually have met you with Chloe um, back when I was a teacher and um, my students um, always, because I was a family and consumer sciences teacher, were always very um, compelled to help children, especially, who were fighting any kind of challenges. How could we help families and children? So um, why don't you explain some of the other components that kind of developed um, because of Chloe's interest, like her love of monkeys, yeah. and um, some of the other, because you help children that are not just diagnosed with this specific type of cancer, Correct. but other types of cancer as well. Yeah. So even though um, our, our focus with research is DIPG okay. because it's so hard to, mm -hmm. to treat, um, but just helping families, that's we, we help families that have all childhood cancers. Mm -hmm. So we really open that up. Um, so w one of the things that we did when we started the foundation, my first initial thought was, we've got to find a cure. Mm -hmm. And then very quickly, I realized that's going to take hundreds of thousands and maybe even millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And I just did not have the capacity to do that and being in a small community. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I could do something. And mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to help families that are in the fight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if there is a cure, these these kids are still going to be diagnosed and they're still going to have to go through some treatment mm -hmm. you know wh whatever it is so one of the things um, that was really important to us is when Chloe was diagnosed the hospital in Kansas City gave us a bear and we called that Chloe bear and Chloe bear went to school when she wasn't mm -hmm. able to and spent a lot of time in the classroom mm -hmm. with her classmates mm -hmm. and they really took took um took that and really embraced it and her teacher really embraced it and so we would receive photos of Chloe Bear going to the skating rink or going you know mm -hmm. to library or PE and her friends 
had a responsibility to kind of include Chloe mm-hmm. Barron. So it was like they still had their friend there in the mm-hmm. class. Um, so that was really important to us. And also her brother, two, being two years older, he had to stay back when we traveled mm-hmm. her tr- treatment, and he was with grandma and grandpa. Mm-hmm. And so giving him that responsibility of bringing the bear home every mm-hmm. week um, and, and collecting the notes and stuff, mm-hmm. he still felt like he was responsible mm-hmm. for something and still felt like he mm-hmm. was part of everything going on. So that was really an important thing, too, um, to include siblings. So so with that being um, an important part of what we experienced, um, mm-hmm. I decided – maybe I can do something more with that and not just a stuffed animal, but make an entire program Mm -hmm. out of Mm -hmm. that. So Chloe loved monkeys. So Mm -hmm. she was all about monkeys. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, her collection, probably a hundred stuffed monkeys, you know, so um, I knew that it had to be a monkey. And one day, uh, you know, we were, we had started the foundation and I knew I wanted to do this. And it just kind of popped in my head, there's a monkey in my chair. And mm-hmm. so I knew that's what mm-hmm. it needed to be. And so, um, and one of the first things we did with the, the Monkey in My Chair program was um, I wrote a book because mm-hmm. I knew that um, when she was diagnosed, the nearest hospital really for treatment, um, occasionally families are able to go to Wichita, but 90% of families are traveling all the way to Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And with that being three hours away, um, there's no social worker or child life specialist Mm -hmm. that's going to come to the school Mm -hmm. and sit down with the staff Mm -hmm. in the classroom and explain what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that was on my shoulders Mm -hmm. as a parent. And I knew, like, not all parents were going to be able to do that. And Mm -hmm. so I felt like it was important to write this book. Mm And put it into, you know, elementary school mm-hmm. terms. And mm-hmm. so the teacher or the parent could sit down with the, with the kids in the classroom, read the book, and the book talks about what change, you know, that their friend might start to look different. Mm-hmm. And so then that opens up those conversations about, you know, what might happen. You know, when, when your friend is gone for a couple months and they come back, they might not have any hair, right. you know. And so with Chloe, she did not have traditional chemo, um, so she didn't lose her hair. But because she had a brain tumor, she was on a high dose of steroids. Right. And she went from a petite 40-pound little girl to about 80 pounds. Right. And so it really changed the way she looked. And that can be really scary. I mean, she went, she ended her first grade year and, you know, not having some effects from the steroids, but not fully. And then coming back to Mm -hmm. second grade over the summer and she didn't look like the same Mm -hmm. person. And so um, making sure that those, those kids have a chance to talk about those Did you bring a copy of the book So I did. I actually brought a whole kit. Excellent. So this is what our Monkey My Chair kit looks like now. Very good. And it's evolved over the years and Mm -hmm. kind of gotten a a little bit more professional. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, our first kits that we, our first fundraiser when we started the foundation, we um, started with a kickball tournament, mm-hmm. and yep. um, the the money that we raised out mm-hmm. of our first kickball tournament purchased the first fifty kits that we were able okay. to send out, and so we were really proud of that 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 one fundraiser and that fundraiser did continue on for about twelve years. Mm-hmm. Um, we did retire it, but um, so our kits have evolved. But so this is one of our monkeys. He's awesome. And so I love um, him. The monkey's just big enough to sit in the right. chair, and we've got Velcro on oh, the okay. hands. Okay. So oh, yeah. um, he's stuck to his tail right stuck now. Stuck to the banana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so monkey can hang around the classroom. Yeah. And most of the kids are going to, you know, change the outfit on the monkey, mm-hmm. give the monkey a name. Mm-hmm. Um, monkey um, can be he or mm-hmm. she, depending on the child. Okay. So the, so the kit comes... Um, and how many kits do you think you sent out this last year? Or so typically we it's it's usually around eight hundred to a thousand okay. every year, okay. and we we estimate that's about twenty five percent of children in that in the elementary school age that are diagnosed each year. There's probably about five thousand okay. in that age range. And how do people find out about you? So we um, we have a website, Monkey in My Chair. So in the kit so they can go to the website and request a kit the kits are free so we don't charge the hospital we don't charge the families so in the smaller bag there's going to be a smaller monkey and that that, this is one the child can hold on to because the big one's at school and so they still need a monkey okay um we do pens and pencils um we do a photo album we do a journal 
and then we do a button that they can wear. And so these are all just um, mm -hmm. things that they can have in the classroom. The, the bag can collect notes and photos and, or, or pictures that the kids have drawn, no, you know. Uh -huh. um, maybe they bring a little present for the child. But we also have a teacher companion. And so this is really important for the classroom teacher. I mean, it goes through the book and, you know, has discussion questions that they might talk about while they're reading the book. It has some lesson plans they can use, some website resources, books, other books they can read in the classroom. Um, my, my children's book did not make it into, oh, there it is. It just got out of the bag. So and here's the book that mm -hmm. that I wrote, and it's um, called There's a Monkey in My Chair. And it's actually illustrated by um, Chloe's classmates. So we had um, a book party. and This um, is when she was in the second grade or first grade for so her first grade classmates? Her, her, she passed away at the beginning of second grade, yeah. and so her second grade classmates in the spring, then okay. we did a party, uh, okay. and they, um, so here's an interesting fact about the book. Um, I, I wrote the book first, and then I found an illustrator to do, illustrate my monkey, and so he did the illustrations, and and so, um, and when the kids came to do their illustrations, neither one had seen each other's pages, but when you look... And you look at the illustrations that the child did, like this, they've got mustaches on, and that's exactly what our illustrator did. So without even seeing each other's um, uh, pictures, concept. there was a lot of um, duplication. And so and it was just like this one. They almost um, mimic each other, mm -hmm. and they didn't. With hands you know, up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so the book is really important, and it gives a chance for them to read it to the classroom and really, you know, talk about inclusion and compassion and all those things. That's so important. Um, there's a lot of isolation um, with childhood yeah. cancer and not being able to be around their friends. Part, yeah. And that is, that is really something that's really important. And mm -hmm. Chloe loved being at school. And one thing with her is when we talked about um, when her last treatment wasn't working, you know, would we stay in Houston and, and try something else or would we go back? Mm -hmm. And, and sh she wanted to be in school. She wanted yeah. to be with her friends. Yeah. And we knew that um, additional treatment was probably not going to help her anyway. So, right. um, and, and a lot of times it's quality of life and mm -hmm. being able to be right. where, where at least you're going to enjoy the, that, those, that time that you have. Right. So, so. <clears throat> How much does it take now to probably put one of these kits together if a person wanted to just sponsor an individual kit or sponsor kits? Right. So right now, our kit sponsorship is $75. Okay. Um, we are, you're yes. still able to do it for that. So, but we are changing a few things. Okay. We're going to be um, uh, ordering new components. And so a, a, a few things are going to change yes. in the kit. And the cost of, yeah, of, everything's of components up. has gone up. Uh -huh. So our, our net once we roll out our new components and our new we, are, we have a new logo coming out, okay. um, it is going to be $100 yeah. per okay. kit, which is understandable. It's been $75 for a long time. It has. And that yeah. includes the shipping to get it to yeah. the family. So we've it's tried to keep um, things low. Uh -huh. But um, it, it will it will be $100 um, to sponsor mm -hmm. a kit. But... But we tell people that when you're sponsoring that one kit, yes, it's sent to one family and one child, but the impact mm -hmm. is tenfold. The entire mm -hmm. classroom, so there's 20 kids that are directly impacted mm -hmm. by that monkey in my chair. And then, you know, the whole grade level is also impacted, and sometimes even the school, right. because the school knows there's a monkey in there in their, in their right. classroom. And so then they learn there's about... There's an awareness. Yes, right. yes. And, and they... So, so really, when you're sponsoring one monkey in my chair kit, the impact and and is really affecting you know mm -hmm. up to three to four hundred children, mm -hmm. you know, because they're mm -hmm. getting a secondary impact of that, mm -hmm. and definitely those twenty kids in that classroom, and as well as the teachers. Mm -hmm. So it's it's definitely a good program, um, and there wasn't anything like it when we started mm -hmm. it, and we have such good feedback. Mm -hmm. People are like oh my gosh, this takes a weight off of us. We were mm -hmm. worried about school, but we needed to be focused on treatment, which is exactly why we started it, because mm -hmm. the family, the doctors, mm -hmm. their focus is treatment. Right. You need to focus on right. that. And Not the social, emotional and side the, of it. And the child, they just want to be in school. Right. So this really helps them put right. something in place and, right. and do that. So besides a monkey in my chair the and, and the research towards still trying to find a cure, what are the other things that you are doing as well? Because so, I know there's other things. Yes, absolutely. So our Monkey My Chair has grown. We serve um, 
over 200 hospitals, children hospitals wow. in the United States. So trying to keep up with that. We also ship to Canada, um, Australia, New Zealand, and, and Ireland. So it is an international program where they, and internationally they do purchase them from us because we can't raise enough funds right. to, to pay, you know, to pay for all okay. of those. So they do um, okay. purchase them from us, but it's all English speaking um, countries right now. Okay. Um, so, so we do our monkey in my chair and then and the hospitals order those for, for, for yeah. their families. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a, yes. Okay. So hospitals can request them or the families can go oh, to the website and okay. request it directly. Okay. Yeah. And okay. so we, it's about half and half and on how that works. Work. So okay. um, there's also an online component to this where um, it's called Monkey Message. And when they get their kit or register one from the hospital, they're they're both given a login to a Monkey Message. And so it's just an online portal. They can send messages back and forth without using personal email. They can It just gives them a way okay. to communicate back and forth with the classroom. So oh, that's a fun thing well, that's cool. um, that the, the classrooms and the families can do. Um, so other than Monkey My Chair which does take up a lot of our time and resources, um, we offer support to, to Kansas families. So oh. um, that's been really important yeah, to us. Yeah, you told us. me you had a delivery tomorrow. Yes, yes. We, um, so we, one, of the, one of the things we do is called a warrior wagon, and we have a wagon we're going to deliver tomorrow. But the wagons are, um, we t- do a big canvas wagon, and we fill it with snacks, um, travel items, toiletry bags for the parents and the older kids. Um, we have comfy clothes. We have awareness items items from um, Love Chloe. We do um, gift cards. So we include about 250 in restaurants and $500 visa card. So Mm -hmm. our wagons include about they're valued at about $1,500 each. So they're pretty um, in a lot. Um, Comprehensive. And yes, yes. And we get, try to include the entire family. Okay. So when a, when a family applies for a warrior wagon, we get information about not just the child, but mm-hmm. their siblings, because mm-hmm. we want to make sure we know how important it is to include mm-hmm. those siblings and everything we're doing. So um, we... We do the wagons, and we always deliver those in person, so that way we can meet the family and the child and and deliver that to them. So we um, we go all across the state. So we've driven to the corners of the state pretty mm-hmm. much. Um, last week we had one in Hayesville, okay. Kansas. Mm-hmm. Um, tomorrow we have one in Marysville. Mm-hmm. So that has really grown. Last year we did six wagons. Okay. This year we've done thirteen. Wow. And so we're on number fourteen. Wow. So it is. It's really grown a lot and so some of the funds from like the gala that mm-hmm. you host and yeah. or different events go to helping fund those warrior wagons absolutely okay. yeah okay. yeah a lot of our donations go towards the warrior wagons okay. the other thing we offer families is they can apply for cash assistance so okay. they can get a grant for up to fifteen hundred dollars okay. and um so last year i think we did um 10 or 12 grants this year we've done 20 um, wow. and we'll do 21 we'll deliver a grant with the That's wagon amazing. so families can apply for all of our services they don't have to pick one or another we, they can apply for a wagon. They can apply for a grant. And then the the other thing that we do is a gas card. So um, we we had a bill passed in the state of Kansas a few years ago for a distinctive license plate. I saw that. And oh so um, we're pretty proud of our license mm-hmm. plate. And if anyone doesn't want the new plane license right. plate that's yeah. coming out, yeah. then they're welcome to get a Love Chloe license plate. Yeah. Um, it's it's a beautiful plate. It was drawn by a child, not a child of cancer. Um, child but um, a child that's been involved in the foundation and was able to draw that for us Mm so it's it um, features a rainbow to to um, signify hope and it has a gold ribbon which is a symbol Mm -hmm. of childhood cancer and it the ribbon is actually yellow brick road so that ties the kansas in there um so when you get that distinctive license plate there you'll make a 50 dollar donation um and that entire 50 dollars comes right back to the love chloe foundation um so we're getting more and more license plates on the road and so though that fifty dollars goes towards what we call fueling the fight gas cards and so okay. families can apply for a gas card it's 250 dollars gas card so it's not just one tank of gas it's going to fill their tank a few times and so we are allow them to apply for that every 12 months okay so um and like with the grants we've had some families have to receive a grant three times now just because their child's still undergoing treatment and yeah. they can apply for that every 12 months Month. So we want to be able to be there. Um, one of the things about when a child is diagnosed, a lot of times uh, you'll hear about, you know, oh, you know, we heard that so and so's, you know, child is just diagnosed. 
there's an immediate support and immediate call to action when you hear about a child being diagnosed. And there's a, there's a lot of fundraisers that go on and it's great. It's, and it helps the family a lot. But then you realize that nine, 10 months down right, the road, right. those same, that same support isn't there, right. but we want to be there to right. step in and like we can help. And right. um, we don't expect the community to have to, you know, do fundraiser after fundraiser for, you know, every, every family. And so, and it, it can get tiring, and right. but the, the the need is still there. Right. And um, with with a, just a regular leukemia diagnosis, which is very treatable, the treatment is two to three years. Right. So that's a long time for these families. And we have families um, that have been going through treatment for seven, eight years. Um, so it might be a relapse, or mm-hmm. it just might be those follow ups. Right. But it's very common for families to be going through treatment like right. years and years later. Okay. So where are you located? How can we find you? <laughs> so we are in Salina. We are actually over on Fifth Street. Everyone knows where Carolee Donuts is over mm-hmm. on Fifth Street. We're right across the street. Okay. <laughs> so close to get a donut. So get a donut and then pop in and okay. see us. Um, one of the things in our office that we like to tell people about, um, one of the other things we do for the Kansas families is we um, do a family day every year. So we have a day where where we do something fun at a pumpkin patch or the zoo. Mm-hmm. We did it at the district this year. But all those families are invited mm-hmm. for a fun day. Mm-hmm. We give them food, and then they get to enjoy the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so last year when we did that, we did it at the pumpkin patch. And each of the families that came, we had about 12 families come, they were each given a ceiling tile and told that they could do whatever they wanted mm-hmm. on that. And so when you come into our office and you look up on the ceiling, it represents all each of those 12 mm-hmm. families and how they wanted to honor their hero or just honor their entire family. And so it's mm-hmm. really, really special um, to see that. But um, yes, we do have a location. We're there from eight to four, um, Monday through Thursday, and then we uh, only eight to two on, on Fridays. But um, we have sh- awareness shirts and awareness monkeys um, mm-hmm. that we, we have um, available for people that want to come in and, and see us. Well, Heidi, thank you so much for sharing and for developing such a phenomenal foundation and for um, being there for people who are fighting something that no one chooses um, to hear is that, you know, you have cancer. Um, you are just amazing. And this is amazing opportunity right here in our, our town. And I just, you're just so passionate and um I know families appreciate you so much, and I'm so glad that you're here and that it, the, the mission's still going on and that it's growing and that more yeah. people can be aware of it. And it's just, uh, and there's no season off, you know, right. with this disease. You, you just, you never know when mm-hmm. when another diagnosis is going to pop up. Right. And so if we're, if, if we've, We want to make sure we raise enough funds so we're always there to help Mm -hmm. so we don't have to turn a family away. Mm -hmm. And so whenever those requests come Mm -hmm. in, and we're always looking for volunteers. Volunteers come and assemble our Monkey Mm -hmm. My Chair Kits. We just had volunteers yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of different groups in the community that will um, reach out and and we just schedule a time for them to come in and -hmm. do that. It's, It's kind of a fun project. And kids can help. You know, and so um, not all volunteer opportunities are kid friendly, but this is definitely right. one that is. I've done it both with students. <laughs> I've done it both as an adult. And it is it is a fun way to gather and to help a good cause. So yeah. have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. And you uh, too. have a good road trip up to Marysville tomorrow. And uh, I hope that people will pop in and see you at, the, at your office and or attend your next event. So yes, that would be great. Merry Christmas. You too.